Uh, looks like the top one I got here is Daryl Green, and it says, why is it that crazy liberals seem to be concentrated along the East and West Coasts? Great question. Very great question. Um, it's the value of, of having a, a bit of an education. I didn't know the answer to that question until you asked it, and I just started thinking about it, and it took me about five seconds to process the data, and then I began to realize it. Liberal elitism is the product of a city. The reason that the reason that crazy people live on the coasts and not inland is because up until recently, you could only really have a city of any significant size on the coast because most of the trade and commerce that happens in the world happened by boat, by ship. And so you find crazy liberals in the Northeast, and you find them in, in, um, in all around the Northeast and so on, because that's where New York, Boston, Philadelphia, uh, Baltimore, all these places were. And, and that's where these cities were built. And you have to be part of a city in order to be a liberal. There are no liberals. Certainly, no, there's no progressives out on the farm, because you can't, because out on the farm, living in the country, the environmental conditions for uh, progressivism um, not only don't exist, but but it, it's almost like it's almost like bacteria can't can't grow in sunlight. And out there uh, in the country, the conditions for progressivism not only don't exist, but they make it impossible to exist. And the primary condition. In the, in the countryside that, that prevents progressivism is that it is a small community where everybody knows everybody. There is no anonymity in a small town. Progressivism needs anonymity. It needs, a, it needs a giant crowd of people that you can disappear into and never see them again. You need to be disconnected from the reality of the masses being actual individuals, and the only way that happens is in a city. In a city, if you've got some money, you can look at the great unwashed and just realize they're just cogs in the economic machine. But if you, if you live in a small town, you know all these cogs by name. You grew up with them, and you went to school with them. They're, they're kids. You know their parents, and they know you. You don't, you don't get a chance to look on people as, uh, as, a, as a political weapon or as a class. You don't see them as a class. These are not proletarians or peasants. They're citizens. They're farmers, and they're people who work out in the middle of, of, of nowhere, but they're, but they're people and we know them. And, and you cannot demonize some people and, 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 um, and excuse others out there. But you can in a big city. Now you could argue that LA really um, is, an, is an example. Uh, San Francisco is a perfect example of, of a city that is a city because it's a port. San Francisco Bay may be the best natural harbor in the world. It's, uh, I, I'm quite sure it's at least the best one in the United States. And so San Francisco is based on a city, and this progressivism is a rot that happens on cities. And that's why New York is so progressive. Now, Los Angeles, you could make an interesting different case for it, because Los Angeles, for a second there, seemed to disprove the theory, because although Long Beach has since become a, the major import um, uh, spot for America because of all the trade we do with Asia now, but it wasn't for the longest time. And you realize that L.A. was an exception because um, L.A. was built on an industry that happened right around the same time as progressivism began to get started. The end and end of the 19th century, century in the early part of the 20th century. And L.A. became L.A. because of the entertainment industry. It's an interesting story, an interesting book, a very interesting book called... Um, is it a country of their own? Something like that. And it's a historical look at Hollywood. And basically what they were saying is, is that Hollywood got started because, because anti-Semitism among the, the financial power structures back east, right around this time, end of the 1800s, early 1900s, was still so prevalent, you know, this kind of country club anti-Semitism, that, that Jewish businessmen really had no way to um, to succeed or, or really thrive, they couldn't. They couldn't. They couldn't get into the game. And according to this book, an empire of their an empire of their own. That's what it is. Along comes this brand new economy, a brand new product that doesn't require 
being shipped in huge quantities of raw materials. You don't need to be sitting next to a port to make movies. You're not unloading timber or, or iron ore or whatever the case may be in the industrial era. And this industry came about in such a way and, and at such a time where these Jewish businessmen realized that there was a chance to basically create not just a city, but you, you're basically going to create an entirely new industry which they would be able to play in and, in fact, dominate. And, um, and that's why L.A. is a, is a, is a big city and, and why L.A. is also part of this fundamental um, progressivism. It requires cities. Thomas Jefferson understood this very well. Thomas Jefferson time and time and time again talked about how when you pile people on top of each other, as in a city, virtue disappears. And it disappears because in a big city, you can do something absolutely miserable, mean-spirited, and rotten to somebody, and there's nothing they can do about it. You're gone. Disappear. You don't have muggings in small towns because if you mug somebody in a small town, the person who was mugged is going to say, John Davidson put a knife to my neck and took $10 from me last night. And then the town will go and arrest John Davidson. And they will probably say things like, there was always something wrong with that boy. And if it's not John Davidson, then they will say, somebody new is in town, who I've not seen before, who held me up with a knife. And that person will stand out like a sore thumb. And so you don't get these kind of crimes because it's, the situation is not anonymous. But in a city, you can disappear. And when you disappear, you can get away with anything. It's the ring of invisibility. This is what the modern press does for um, democratic politicians. It provides them with the invisibility to do what they, what they want to. And when you have invisibility, anybody will become corrupt. Anybody. It's not just progressives and liberals. If you had full invisibility, when people are wearing a mask, they become utterly corrupt. It's just human nature. The difference between our philosophy and their philosophy is we understand people are built in a certain way that has not changed, and we make allowances and prepare ourselves for these defects in human nature, and their entire philosophy is predicated on them not existing. And then when they do exist, they sit there and wonder why all these millions of people are dead. When it's not much of a mystery, really, the millions of people are dead because... Some of you had good intentions, some of you not, but you basically allowed yourselves to be suckered into this belief that, um, you know, that, that, that paradise on earth is achievable. And, and it's funny, it's a strange coincidence because I was thinking about this uh, quite a bit earlier today. I was thinking about this song that was very popular when I was just uh, getting old enough, I want to say right around 68, 69, 70, somewhere in there. And, and the song is um, Age of Aquarius by Fifth Dimension. And I had the song in my head, and, and I was thinking about the lyrics, and I just thought, no wonder we got so messed up, you know? Uh, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius. Harmony and understanding, peace, goodwill, and trust abounding. No more falsehoods or divisions, only living dreams of visions, mystic crystal revelations, and the mind's true liberation. What, what are they saying about the age of Aquarius? What did this whole generation of Americans buy into, this whole hippie generation? They bought into... Harmony and understanding, peace and good, peace and peace, goodwill and trust abounding. No more falsehoods or divisions. Oh, I forget what the only living something, something, something. No. No. Isn't it interesting that when 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 liberals and progressives talk about harmony, when when and unity and um and um and everybody working together, and everybody, and no more war, no more conflict. The reason that they see, when they think about this world where everybody gets along and everybody agrees, and, and there's no more harmony, no more division, peace, goodwill, and, and trust abounding, it's because the world looks exactly the way they want it to. It doesn't look the way that a Muslim wants it to, it doesn't look the way that a Chinese dictator wants it to doesn't look the way that it looks in Africa, doesn't look like it looks in, 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 um, in uh, Montenegro. It's their world transmuted onto everybody else, and when they can imagine a world where everybody thinks exactly the way that they do, then there's harmony and understanding, peace, goodwill, and trust abounding. But in the real world, it isn't like that. 
because these people are idiots. Their children is a better term. Their children. Um, Evan say it got it right. Their children. Everything that they, they, their emotional development stopped at age five, and 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 so they think that everything they learned that they needed to know they learned in uh, in kindergarten. Um, let's see what else we got. 